Hey, fight fans, get ready for a look at the octagon like you've never seen before as Kevin James stars in the inspirational comedy, Here Comes the Boom. Oh, hey, Principal Betcher. You're late. Again. Come on, man. I was teacher of the year. That was 10 years ago. Feels like eight, though, right? As several of you already know, Wilkinson High School has been operating at a budget deficit. We are cutting all extracurricular activities. Excuse me? Everyone's quit on these kids. We have to cut $48,000. Or raise the money. Oh, and who's going to do that? We will. So what exactly is the plan? How about we work out a plan in my apartment and dinner also happens to be around, so we just do both. Not a chance. I gotta figure this thing out. Oh yeah, right after you watch the fight. It's hard to believe he got 10 grand for that performance. You mean 10 grand for that fight? But he lost. Hey, if he won, it would have been 50. Oh, I wanna fight mixed martial arts. This is crazy. Do you even know how to do that? No. No, I do not. But I was a really good wrestler in college. I think I can do this. Let's see what you got. Right, which guy am I fighting? Both. Oh, come on, I can't fight two guys. I can't train a 42-year-old biology teacher. You want to be a fighter? Start in the cage. <laughs> is that a chicken? This is bottom-level MMA. You're going to follow in the footsteps of all those great warriors that put fear in the hearts of their opponents. You dislocated your shoulder. You got to help me. You ready? I always wanted to try this. Try this? What do you mean, try you never done this? Don't... Ah! You know what? You're not cutting anything. That's the first installment right there. You're getting beat up in your bathing suit. You are embarrassing this school. This wasn't plan A, but I don't know what else to do. If you don't make an effort, nothing's ever going to change. Inspiring your students, I see. All right, everybody, let's get our story straight. Uh, Derek did it. What are you teaching these kids if you go through with it? What am I teaching them if I don't? Be able to do this. You can quit right now. And everything we work for will have been accomplished. Our students, they're inspired. What if I dump this ball in Mad Who and you have dinner with me at my house? Deal. No, no, that's cheating. Dreams are about to come true. That go in? In this corner, TV went to Tinseltown and sat down with Kevin James, who stars as Scott Voss a bored high school teacher who finds the motivation to fight to save the struggling school's fledgling musical program. How will he do it? Well, it'll be painfully funny. Please welcome Scott Balls! Watch this. Intimidation! Tale of the tape Oof. for Kevin James, hailing from Mineola, New York, standing all of five foot eight and three quarter inches. I'll give you that. Weighing in at a trim and ready svelte 235 pounds these mm, days. I gotta change that up a little bit. <laughs> Stand up comedian, original voice of Otis and Barnyard, hosted the Kids' Choice Awards. Star of King of Queens is IPS driver Doug Heffernan. A plethora of big screen work starring in the likes of Hitch, The Dilemma, Mall Cop, Paul Blart, Zookeeper, uh, just to name a few, writer, producer, high school tag team partner of Mick Foley. Yes. Mankind. And now yeah. starring as Scott Voss, a uh, former, well, high school wrestler, bored biology teacher, mm -hmm. moonlighting as an MMA fighter in the new movie, here comes the boom. Welcome, Kevin James. Wow. I need to bring you everywhere with me. I want you to announce that to my kids when I come down for breakfast, that I'm about to take the table. That's nice. <laughs> when, I, when I interview great fighters, I ask them to describe their style. They say boxer, puncher, this. You've done so much. 
You're so versatile. Mm -hmm. How do you describe yourself as eater. an entertainer? Eater. I'm an eater, for sure, because, no, and I'll tell you why, it drives me. Food's always driven me. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it is my opponent, you know, because I'll work with it, and then I'll tag it, and I'll jab it, and then I, I, I work with it, and then I, then I mingle with it, then I love it, then I, uh, I jump on it, and I, and I roll with it, and, uh, <laughs> and then I end up, you know, it, it becomes part of me. You know, great punchers yes. are born. I think funny guys are born. You can't teach, you're just, you're just born a funny guy. Would you agree with that? Um, you, you know what? I think you can get better, but it's like, you know, you can get better at anything you do, but you, there are things that are innate within you that, you know, if it's going to be there, it's, it's there, it's God-given, or you, you don't have it. I do, I do agree with that. In this movie, you know, it's a lot of athleticism you had to go through for yes. Here Comes the Boom. Was it a challenge? You know, it's one thing to do something athletic and be serious, but you had to do something athletic and at the same time remain funny. Was that difficult? It was, a, you know, it's, it's a, a mix of everything, which was the challenge that I like. I don't, you know, I don't know if it was uh, difficult, but it, was, it, it could appear that way. But we wanted to make it, the, the thing is, in the most emotional and uh, trying times of, 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 from walking out, you know, uh, to, to whether it's a boxing ring or a mixed martial arts ring, whatever it is, the, the, the energy gets so pumped up, but there are backstage moments, there are funny moments, and that's, these are the natural, organic things that I wanted to show in that. There's the, you know, uh, they're the big release moments in life where you, you know, you're, the, the tension is so high, but you have it. Someone will say something, and it just cracks everybody up, and it releases the tension, and everybody, you know, can get back into life. What I like about this movie, and I think it's a good time, maybe it's an always a, a good time for there to be something that focuses on apathy, and education and motivation. I think this movie does it. Absolutely. I mean, that was really one of the reasons. There, there, there are such great teachers out there, and there, there, there are people uh, in all walks of life, whatever profession you may be, that kind of just you know either get tired with their job or you know just don't put the effort that they need to do it. And uh, it, it affects other aspects of your life. It affects the people you're around. Uh, when you become the best version of yourself out there, working you know to be the best and and and. and the sacrifice, you know, that you do to, to, you know, in this movie here, it's, you know, there's no greater sacrifice than to lay down your, your life, literally, for your friend. Uh, uh, it just kind of steamrolls. It, 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 it starts making everybody else think, and it becomes uh, inspirational and better for everyone around you. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a movement. Tell us about your preparation for this movie and working with Boz Rudin. Oh man, it was, uh, Boz and I go way back. So we're, you know, I've always been a fan and always respected the, the fight game. I really have, I mean, it's incredible to see what these guys go. They're the best conditioned athletes on the planet, uh, bar none, I believe. Uh, you know, and just what they have to go through. But what inspired me most about it was their stories off screen too and what they're fighting for, what's driving them, what's making them do this. You know, those are the real stories. So if you just go into fighting, because oh, I want to be a fighter, I want to be a champion. I don't think it's going to get you as far as I'm fighting for my family or I'm fighting for this cause or this and this is really what drives me because th it's that, those things that are going to get you up in the morning at 4 o'clock for that run when it's freezing out and everybody else is sleeping or whatever, jumping that rope, getting in shape, training every day and working on it. So it's, it's, it's basically that that drives me and when Boss, I saw him, I saw him come to America and become, you know, the same thing, working hard at, at not only fighting but also becoming an actor, it inspires me. So we wanted to kind of put this movie together where I would do this and, and, and train that same way. And, and we did everything as realistically as possible. We got the blessing of the UFC. We wanted it to be real. I had to go through everything a fighter had to go through, uh, and uh, except actually getting knocked out, thank God. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, we kept it as realistic as possible. Well, best of luck, continued success, and we'll, we'll get you on the scale right after this interview and see what your actual weight is. With the actual weight, weight is, is, that'd be good. Okay, as long as you got uh, two scales. In this corner, TV also sat down with an MMA legend and former UFC champion, Boss Rutten, who stars as Nico, Scott's friend, and now, much to his dismay, the man in charge of teaching Boss to go from an overweight high school teacher to an MMA stud. Will it work? Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh. Relax. Relax. Hey, why would you pass in the UFC? You're not ready for a fight like this. You realize we're six grand away and the semester's almost over? It's too dangerous. Yeah, but this could be one and done. Hey, the UFC's the real deal, all right? It's big time. There's no broken cages or chickens running around. Okay, you know what? I, I gotta be honest. I, I don't see what the problem is. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what the problem? The problem is we're the same age and I can kick your... <laughs> you know, uh, maybe we should... Uh... 
You know, he's up. He's okay. Boz Rudin <clears throat> welcomed in this corner. You're welcome. Uh, tell us how you got involved with mixed martial arts. It's not your typical uh, way. You weren't some kid beating up everybody in high school. Or Tell us how you got started. I, well, actually, I was. I used to have a horrible skin disease and, and a very bad asthma. So I was very skinny and had, had to wear gloves and my hands would burst and pus would come out. So my arms, I was filled with that stuff. So needless to say, I didn't have a lot of friends. But I was always a good athlete. You know, in PE, they would always dodgeball or something like that. I would be the first guy they picked, but they wouldn't hang out with me. So I think, you know, and when you get bullied, you know, you have this payback kind of thing. So when I saw a Bruce Lee movie all the way back in 76 was that Enter the Dragon, that was it. That was my thing. I wanted to become, you know, because I wanted to be invincible. invincible. So later, fast forward, forward, you know, I started finally doing martial arts. And then when mixed martial arts came along, they called it Free Fight at the time when I was there. And it was just because I did some uh, comedy shows at that time, comedy martial arts shows. It was very athletic. We come up in a flick flock and a somersault backwards, and I would kick somebody in the stomach, and he would throw me away. And then while I would fly back, I'd kick him in the face, you know, like cool stuff. And one of the guys came to me and said, hey, maybe you should try this free fighting stuff in Japan. You know, I can probably hook you up, and that's it. He called out of the blue, said, hey, I have uh, a Japanese crew here looking for new fighters. You got to come now. And I went over there, and uh, a guy tried to knock me out. It resulted in, of course, me knocking him out with a high kick. And he got a big cut in his eye, and I saw the Japanese people pointing at me. And that was it. I, I think two and a half months later, I was in Japan. When I talk to fighters, and I, I ask a fighter, uh, describe your style, <clears throat> boxer, puncher, boxer, puncher, fighter. You're such a mixture, Muay Thai, yep. Taekwondo, wrestling. How would you describe yourself as a as a mixed martial artist. A mixed martial artist. You know, I, I, I'm very proud of the fact that that I came in as a striker and they found out real fast because they knocked two guys out and the third fight, yeah, nobody's going to stand with me anymore. So they took me to the ground. And right away I got introduced to an ankle hold, to a toe hold. And I almost broke my ankle off. And I go, oh my God, you know, I, I got to start learning this game. I couldn't find people to train with though. In Amsterdam they had a group where I went to a few times, but it's so far away from me and, you know, it, it took a long time. It took, normally I get angry after a couple of losses. I can't stand losing until my last loss against Ken Shamrock. That's when I got really vocal when I came home and I started everybody asking, I need somebody to train with. Doesn't matter if you have no skills. And, and I found one guy, 19 year old kid, Leon. We started training and we're just doing it all day long. And then I transformed, I became this ground guy suddenly. You know, I, I, saw, I won my next eight fights by submissions all different submissions, armbar, heel hook, inverted heel hook, you know, you name it, you know, and then suddenly I wrapped up my career with actually two more wins by submission than by knockout, so. When I <clears throat> watch films of you, and I was actually watching films of you with a, uh, one of my boxing buddies the other day, your transition between feet to hand was really sensational, very smooth, and I think one of the things you did best, uh, you were so calm in there, and that's yeah. important, I think, in any sport, especially in fighting, to be calm in the eye of the storm. It's the most important. I think it's in, in with everything. It's like acting. I realize also it's all about can you, come, so when somebody says, oh, you were just boss, you were acting just boss, I said, dude, you just gave me the best compliment because that's, it's, it's hard. People don't realize under pressure. There's no room for mistakes also in acting. You know, you don't get hit in the face. But, you know, it's a, a big movie costs a lot of money, you know. A missed scene is $30,000. So, next one. You know, so, uh, calmness has always been my key ingredient. Stamina and being calm. And I know that I can really focus well. I can totally get into the zone. And I hear, listen to the corner of him. You know, and I focus on the people uh, around me. It's just, uh, I'm getting in there. But it's just being honest to yourself, I always say. Tell yourself what really can happen. And you're going to find out there's not a lot bad that can happen. You know, there's a referee there. You know, in the beginning of the UFC, when they had no referee, they say, oh, you want to do this? I said, no, I don't want to do this. What, are you afraid? I said, I'm not going to be crazy, you know. If I get knocked out, I want, uh, and there's always crazy guys who keep hitting, you know, and if there's no referee who doesn't pull up, that's not healthy. I said, as soon as I have a referee, I'll do this stuff, you know. And then, of course, after UFC 2, right away a referee came because they saw this is crazy, you know, because you had guys like Tank Abbott who would say to the corner, <clears throat> sorry, if you throw the towel, you know, I'm going to beat you up. So he got his ass kicked, so to say, but then he looked, they're looking at the corner, and the corner's just nobody at the cojones to throw in the towel because they were going to get it afterwards. You see, and that was not healthy. Are you <clears throat> concerned, like I am with my sport, there's so many wannabe teachers of boxing 
out yeah. there. And I, and I know MMA is very popular, UFC and everything, but the guys like you that really know the damn sport, I think I see a lot of kids teaching UFC and, and, and mixed martial arts that I'm concerned about the teaching of it. Are you? It's very much so. It's, uh, it's in, insane. And, and uh, it's on a really low level, you know, and, and I, I get guys in all also pros and it's footwork. I go, goes, who, who taught you this? And, and I'm really about about footwork and basis, you know, the the, ingre the basic stuff has to be really good. And once you have that good, then we can the foundation. It's like the house, we always say, you know. If that's shaky, well, then the whole finding is going to be shaking. So I make sure that's my constant motivation. If I do, I have this workout called the Boss with MMA Workouts. It's my voice shouting out very fast instructions, combinations. And I still do that workout because it's the only thing I can do. I can hit a bag because it hurts my neck. But... The only thing, when I'm doing these combinations, I'm constantly, constantly focusing on my feet. Constant straight punches, pushing off on the back leg, like grabbing the floor, so to say, with your feet with four hooks, you know, constantly the shifting them back and grabbing. I think it's the most important thing there is. Here comes the boom with <coughs> Kevin James. Talk about the movie. Uh, you know, Kevin's been a long fan, a long time fan. I know Kevin 15 years, and we've been doing a lot of projects. You know, he was actually in my last fight. In 2006, I made a comeback after like five years, five or six years not fighting, not training even. Uh, offered me a lot of money. I said, okay, I'll take that. I like I have a, a, a home with a pool. So that's why I took the fight. And he was there with me every day. He was shouting every single day. Kevin was there to help me. And I go, you know, now the, suddenly the roles are turned around, you know, and Kevin, and he, he brought it to the max. He said, okay, if I'm going to be a fighter, I'm going to be a fighter. I'm going to train like a fighter. I'm going to eat like a fighter. He did everything right. He lost like 80 pounds for this movie. You saw how he looked. You saw how he looks on the focus mitts. You know, he's just an incredibly talented guy. He's like a bear, I always say. He's very, his motoric skills are very good. He's fast and he's strong. Boxing, that's my world. Mm. And uh, I know you, you are, are, are a boxing fan. Who's your fa favorite fighter, boxer of all time? Oh, of all, uh, Tyson would still be mine of all time, yeah. I, now I say Pacquiao, I'm, I'm really impressed with him, but uh, I, I have a lot of my stuff, you know, about, about looking at Tyson, like my upper body movement, everything is, you know, Tyson, I always say, you know, everything with me, three left hooks, that means three times the upper body rotating, and he does it so black. How would he have been in MMA? How would Mike have he been? Would be, Exceptional in it because he had great footwork, head movement. He had all the, all the, you know, especially footwork. Like a Pacquiao Wall Street, it's a great speed on the feet. Avoid the takedown because, needless to say, nobody's going to stand with Mike Tyson. But his straight punches and how really straight they are. How many people hit in an angle and you only have to pull your head back and it's already missing you. But when you see his slow motion punches, they go whoop. It's it's perfect technique. Uh, the Mato did a really good job on that. And future plans for Boz Rutten. Well, uh, you know, I, we were looking for an agency, and they saw this movie, uh, Willie Morris. <laughs> they called my management the next day and said, hey, we want to represent this guy. So now we're waiting till the movie comes out and see what the people think. And if they like what they see, hopefully it sparks for more work. Well, best of luck, continued success. And I think Here Comes the Boom is going to be a bang. It's going to do great. I think it's going to be a big bang, yeah, a big boom. <laughs> Thanks. Also starring in Here Comes the Boom, Henry Winkler, who plays Marty Streb, a beloved and dedicated music teacher who is about to lose not only his musical program, but his job. And also Selma Hayek, who stars as school nurse Bella, who Voss has been trying to date for years, but to no avail. Thanks to his commitment to help the school and his constant injuries due to his fledgling MMA attempts, she may have a change of heart. You dislocated your shoulder. You have to go to the hospital. Last time I went to the hospital, it actually cost me more than I made in the fight, so you gotta help me. But I would have to reset it. Look, whatever you gotta do, then reset, make it happen. All right. You, you gotta go easy first. No, no, okay. no, 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 foot not going there. All right, the all right, no, you're you. right, you're right. I, I just gotta find the right angle. Over. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. You can't go above. Okay, okay, that's past the level oh, that I just said I can't go, though, perfect. okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you're gonna be all right. Okay. You're gonna be okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I just gotta uh, get in uh, here. Easy, okay? Let's get in there. Uh, All right. That hurts. You ready? Yeah. I always wanted to try this. Try this? What do you mean, try? You never done this? Before? No! Ah! It's okay. Oh, man. So rather than tap out, you're gonna wanna check out Here Comes the Boom, premiering in cities everywhere October the 12th. 
In this corner, TV wants to thank Kevin James and Boss Rutan. And check out, here comes the boom.